Many of you know the story. He was in a wine press. He was pressing. And all of a sudden, something happened within his life. Look at verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You mighty man of valor. And from that point on, something began to take place within his life. Now go with me to chapter 7, verse 6. And many of you know it, where things begin to happen within his life now. God began to call him. And he began to go up a great army. And it goes on to read in verse 6, it says, And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place, so that the people took their provisions and their trumpets in their hands. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And Lord, we just thank you for your beautiful presence that we sense here this morning, oh God. And Lord, I just pray that you would use my life to minister this word to your people. We thank you now. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, come on, everybody says, before you're seated, look to your neighbor and tell them, you are courageous. You may be seated. Stay close to the keyboard, guys. Stay right there where you're at. There's a quote that I ran across that I want to share with you and share it with the first service, and I'll share it with you here this morning. And it reads like this, expect great things. Attempt great things. Expect great things. Attempt great things. This morning, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about great faith. Everybody say great faith. Come on, say it like you got it. Say great faith. Great faith. Great faith. Or some, you may be able to put it as courageous type of faith. And sometimes... As we begin to go through this walk that we are on, this faith, I, I spoke a message last week, the race of faith. And, then, and as we're on this race, how many of us know it's going to take a level of faith? And I like this story of Gideon. And as you begin to study this man of God, you begin to look at his story. There's so much that you could pull from the life of this man. You know, as you look at this life, it kind of pertains to pretty much all of us in this room. It pertains to every single one of us as we've given our lives to the Lord. And many of you know the story. He was going up an army of 32,000 soldiers and he, or, or 135,000 soldiers. And he only had 32. And what 32,000. And what did God say? He says, I want you to begin to minimize this army. And what did he do? He used the portion of scripture that we read of how they drank the water. And then he broke it down to a smaller size all the way down to 300 men to go up against this army. And sometimes as we step on this journey, we walk on this journey and, uh, with Christ and as we serve the Lord, how many of us know that on this walk it's going to require a certain type of faith? Now, I know that many of you may say, you know, I, I just came to church. Somebody invited me, and I wanted to come, and I just wanted to get my life together. Well, that's great, and I think you should. But the moment God begins to touch your life, he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Come on, you ought to give the Lord some praise for that. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. See, God is on our side. On our side. And you got to remember that God is big enough for any enemy that will come our way. And any enemy that tries to come our way, God is strong enough to defeat any enemy. And the real dangers or the, of, of, of this enemy that you and I can come up against, one of the biggest dangers that you and I can begin to face is fear. It's fear. You know, and, and let me just share with you some of the things sometimes that try to put fear in our lives. You know, as we're in this world today, you know, the, the, I think we all understand it, that this world is getting crazy. 
This world is becoming horrible. This world is becoming a, 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 a place that sometimes it will try to grip us with fear. And, and the thing about it is, as we live in this world, there are so many things that try to wrap itself around our lives as Christians. One of the things that try to grip our lives in fear could be maybe what we experience within our family. You know, our, our, our loved ones are not saved. Our children may be going through it. Things may be happening. And sometimes that fear would like to try to get a hold of us. What about when we go through trials or certain things come up within our lives? You know, all of a sudden fear would like to try to get a hold of us. What about even sickness? Sometimes sickness comes up and it tries to grip our lives with fear. Well, I came to expose the enemy here today that when God is in the center of your life and you will submit your life to God, there is no enemy too big for God. I'll say it again. There is no enemy too big for God. And so there are three things that I, I want to give you here this morning. Then we're going to receive communion that we could take from the life of Gideon that he displayed a great faith, a courageous faith. Number one is this is that it takes courageous faith to hear and obey the call of God. It takes courageous faith to hear and obey the call of God. Now, before we can understand these points, I think we should understand what courageous means. Courageous means not detoured by danger or pain, but be brave. Be brave in the midst of things that will come up within our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm having to learn every single day of my life of how to be brave in the things of God. You may say, how do you do it? Do you do it all on your own? Is it self-motivation? Is it help, uh, help, self-help talks? Or what is it? Well, you know, do you talk to yourself? Well, sometimes I do talk to myself. <laughs> but the thing about it is the one that talks to me is right here. God begins to talk to me through his word. And as I get this word inside of me, and as I look at men like Gideon, all of a sudden there is a spiritual braveness that begins to come up within my life. And if God is able to do it in the life of Gideon, why cannot God do it in our lives? To be able to hear and obey the call of God. See, in this race of faith, we need to arm ourselves with courageous faith. We need to arm ourselves with courageous faith. See, we may come in one way, but we shouldn't stay the same way. See, when we come into the house of God, there are things sometimes we come in that, that sometimes hold us back or hold us down. But the moment God gets a hold of your life, all of a sudden something begins to change within you. See, I, I look at many of you here today. You didn't come in the way you look today. Some of you was broke down, beat up. Oh, man, my God. You look like you should be on the cover of the magazine today, right? Come on, somebody. But when you first came in, you didn't look like you needed to be on no cover. Some of you was on a mugshot. But look what the Lord has done. Come on now, look what the Lord has done. And because of that, look at you. You're not the same way that you used to be anymore. You don't even believe the same way no more. I look at some of these men of God in the front row. I look at Pastor Johnny. Look at him today, man. This, this man of God right here, business owner, man of God, pastor. But he didn't, he didn't look like that when he came in. He, I seen his mug shots. I look at Pastor Hobbs, some of the mug shots that he came with. You, some of you look at him like, oh, man, look at this brother. He looks like a banker. No, he didn't come in like that. He didn't come in like that. But look what the Lord has done come on look what the lord has done see we come in one way but we don't stay the same way and see here's the thing is that gideon was a timid unknown young man threshing wheat and suddenly the lord called him to a very great service and then as you begin to read the story you will begin to see has he be able to he was able to defeat the enemy see We, when God calls us, understand this, God will be with us. When God calls you, God will be with you. And the Lord confirmed Gideon's call there in chapter 6, verse 16. We read it. For that moment, from that moment on, this timid young man had courage and the faith to take God at his word and to go forth and do his might. See, when God begins to fill you 
with faith and God begins to uh, 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 raise your life up to a level of faith and all of a sudden you're able to answer the call of God upon your life. And I believe that in this season we are in today. Our ministry is in today. I believe that there is some faith being stirred. I believe that there is some courage that is rising up in the lives of people. That's why I just felt like we needed to kind of just break out a little bit because sometimes these, these things around us and the things that we are around every single day of our lives try to hold us back from being the people that God has called us to be, from being the ministry that God has called us to be. But the moment those things break off and the moment those things are loosened from your life, what happens? You're free. You're free. You're free. And all of a sudden you could be that man and that woman of God that he's calling you to be. You ought to give the Lord some praise right there because I'm talking about you. courageous faith and it doesn't matter what you have what matters is what you do with what you get see some of you got a breakthrough already right before the preaching but what are you going to do with that breakthrough what are you going to do with what God begins to pour into your life see I don't believe that we should sit on what God has given us and that's what happened right here to Gideon something happened with him as he was threshing wheat and what did he begin to do as you read from uh, chapter 6 to verse 7? He began to respond to the call of God upon his life. So the question that I have for you here today is will you begin to respond to what God is doing inside of you? See, some of you here this morning, you're feeling a stirring within your heart. You're feeling something happening within your life. You got baptized. You went through the family life flow. You're involved in life group. You're doing the ministry. And something is stirring within your life. And I want to let you know that because something's stirring within your life, sometimes the things around us can be magnified. And when those things are magnified, sometimes it's just the enemy trying to grip you from pursuing the call of God. So here's what I want to let you know today is that if you would begin to pursue the call of God, don't focus on those other things. God will raise you up. God will fill you with faith. God will pour out his anointing upon your life so that you could be the ministry that he's called you to be. Give the Lord some praise here this morning. Come on, give the Lord some praise. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm stirred right now. I feel good in my season that I'm in. And I'll tell you why, you know. As I was preparing this message, I couldn't help but to be overwhelmed in my spirit. I couldn't help but to be overwhelmed with what was happening in my life. And I began to say, Lord, you know, is it me? Am I weird? What is it? What is it? You know, what's happening in my life? And God began to show me is that you're just relying and depending upon me. And, I, and I've had seasons like that. And I've had seasons where I didn't depend upon God. Hello, somebody. Got real quiet in here right now. You ever experienced that where you didn't rely and depend upon God? You did it all by yourself? Come on, somebody. Some of you nodding at me like, oh, did you, you, you know what I'm going through? But the reality of it is, is that sometimes because of what goes around us, we get our focus on that and not our focus on him. And that's what was happening with Gideon. He, he, he didn't let his focus of the enemy. He didn't let the focus of the army. He didn't let the focus of the multitude. He didn't let the focus of the danger that was around him. His focus stayed on God. His dependency was upon God. His faith was on God. And as his faith was on God, God was able to use his life to make an impact through this world. See, it doesn't matter with what you have or the pedigree you came from, what matters is, is what you do with what God has given you. I like to look at it like some of these famous, uh, some of these great preachers that have been called before us. Many of you may know some and many of you may not have heard of them. But William Curry, William Carey was a shoemaker and all of a sudden God began to call him to evangelize the gospel there in India. D.L. Moody was a salesman. And all of a sudden, God began to call him to be a great evangelist. David Livingston was, a, was, was just a worker in a mill. And all of a sudden, God called him to begin to preach the gospel in Africa. What about this? Some of you would say, well, I don't even know who those guys are. But some of you may know this one. There was a man by the name of Sonny Argonzoni. 
I'll say it again. There was a man by the name of Sonny Argonzoni where God began to get a hold of his life and began to, began to change and interrupt the inner cities of the world. An ex-drug addict, somebody that just said yes to the call. Somebody that was called. He was, he was an evangelist. He was going out and he was preaching. And then all of a sudden the call came upon his life to begin to answer the call. And I like to look at our founder as that he was a man that said yes and did not let the circumstances deter him from what God called him to do. And look at us today. Look where we are today. Look at where God has raised up the ministry of Victory Outreach. But you know, I don't stop there. It really don't. It don't stop there. It begins to trickle on down, all the way down to San Diego, California. So what am I saying to you here today? Don't ever think just because you come into the house of God and God begins to save you that God cannot use your life to make an impact. God cannot use your life to make a difference. But you know what it's going to take? It's going to take courageous faith. Look to your neighbor and tell him, you got courageous faith. Come on, just encourage him. You got courageous faith. And, the, and I believe that that's what we're going to need today is courageous faith to hear and answer the call of God. Number two, courageous faith. We, it takes courageous faith to despise not the day of small things. The day of small things. See, God can use small things. He can use small things. If you read through the Bible, what did he use? He, uh, he, he, he used the uh, little bit of oil. Come on, somebody. He used two fish and five loaves. He just used some small and I like to look at it as, you know I, know, I know we're not small, but when we came in, you know, we come to God, there, we don't have much. We don't have much. But if we bring what we have and we put it into the hands of the master, how many of us know he could do a lot with what we give him? He could do a lot with what we give him. So all he needs, just a little bit of faith. All he needs is maybe just a small yes. Come on, somebody. All he needs is just a little bit of work. And the moment you give him a little bit of work, a little bit of faith, man, he could do miracles with the little bit that you give him because we serve a miracle-working God. I'll say it again. We serve a miracle-working God. And if you give him the little, he could do much with it. See, the enemy was very powerful. And this army had a great great numbers, and Gideon's army was only reduced down to 300. And the thing about it was is that here, here, here's what we need to understand is that God can turn a bad situation into a victorious victory. He can turn a bad situation into a victorious victory. We've seen it time and time and time again. So I got news for you. Don't even trip on the small thing. Don't even trip on the things that you may be experiencing within your life. Just keep your eyes fixed on God. Keep your eyes on the mission and watch how God will turn that situation around into a victorious victory. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on. Come on. You ought to give him praise like if you're going to get the victory. Because God knows how to work with simple things. See, there will come a day... That you will say, God, this is all I have. And that's going to require courageous faith or great faith. Because when you just bring what you have, when you bring what you got, God can do some amazing things with what you bring to him. Give the Lord a good praise here this morning. Play real softly right there. My last point is this. Before we receive communion. God will use, or let me say it this way, God, it takes courageous faith to wield God's weapons of warfare. In other words, wield, in other words, hold or use, hold and use. I shared this with the first service and I'll share it with you because I believe it's pretty powerful. Take a moment, just look at your hands. Look at your hands. There shouldn't be anything in your hands right now, but look at your hands. There's, there's nothing in there. Nothing in there.
And this ministered to me. Because many times we think we need all these things, all these things to make a difference. You know, Gideon didn't have much. I'm not going to go through the story, but as you begin to read it, it says that he had trumpets, pitchers, and a sword. He used insignificant weapons to defeat the army. What did it say is that he, they broke, all together they broke the pots. <laughs> which had probably created a sound of a massive army. And as they blew the trumpet, it sound, they all had trumpets and it sound like a massive army. And when they surround, they were all surrounded, it says they broke them up into three units and they all hold it up their sword, and it looked like a massive army, but it was only 300. And then what did the Bible say is that the, that the enemy was afraid and they fleed. See, God will use simple, insignificant weapons to defeat the army, defeat the enemy. Now what is the weapon? Look at your hands one more time. The weapon is in your hand. You say there's nothing in there. No. The weapon is your hand. It's your hand. It's your life. God uses our life to be the weapon to conquer the enemy. Because when you live for God and you serve God and you live by faith and your life is surrendered totally and completely to Him, you begin to break barriers. You begin to break strongholds. Things are broken off of your life and you begin to pave a way for your family, for your city. The most greatest weapon to be used is a life of a willing vessel. The greatest weapon to be used is a life of a willing vessel. But one thing I've learned is it's going to take courageous faith. And you know how you get that faith? Simply by what we did here. What we do, we praised. And then you pray, you get a hold of God's word, something begins to brew within your life. And when that brewing begins to take place, all of a sudden, you ain't the same no more. I'll be honest with you, man, I'm not the same as I was five years. I remember that song. Gerald Davis, I remember that song. That was very significant because there was a time where we needed breakthrough. And, 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 and when that breakthrough took place, there was growth that took place. And so the moment I, I began to hear that song, it began to remind me again. And it began to stir up my heart again of where we are today. And I said, God, if you did it then, you could do it now. I'm not at the same faith level as I was then, but I'm at another level of faith. Can you imagine where God wants to take our faith? Can you imagine what God wants to do within our ministry? Do you imagine what God wants to do to our lives? Stand with me. I remember. I remember. So now, here's the question. God, will you do it again? God, will you do it again? Because I want my life to make a difference. How many of you want your life to make a difference? So here's the message here today. Great faith. I believe that's happening within our lives. I believe that's happening within our ministry. If you look at our, pa if you look at our pastors, you look at our founders... Great faith is being released. Great faith is being released. Why? Because of the way their lives are moving. The way their lives are moving. So I say this. If they're moving that way, I'm moving the same way. I ain't staying behind. I'm moving the same way. Because there's victory in great faith. There's victory in courageous faith. And I don't want to be anywhere where I'm going to get stuck by the enemy. If anything, I'm staying with my leaders. I'm staying where God is taking us. I'm staying to be a part of the blessing. I'm staying to be a part of the victory. I'm staying in a place where I can build and be everything for God. So 
I believe here this morning that Gideon's life, there's so much more, there's so much more that we can pull from Gideon's life. But I believe the message was clear today that in our ministry, the season we are in right now, I believe God's going to pour out another level of faith all over our ministry. Lift your hands this morning all over this place. We're going to sing a chorus. We're going to sing it twice. We're going to sing a chorus. And I just want you to just go ahead and receive this word, and then we're going to receive communion. Come on, let's sing it. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. 